Thank you for joining us around the fire. For more information or to make a donation, please visit randomactnetwork.com. Now, want to hear a scary story? Have you met the Sangstons? They are cousins of mine, and they live in Surrey. Five years ago, they invited me to go and spend Christmas with them. It was an old house, with lots of unnecessary passages and staircases. A stranger could get lost in it quite easily. Well, I went down for that Christmas. Violet Sangston promised me that I knew most of the other guests. Unfortunately, I couldn't get away from my job until Christmas Eve. All the other guests had arrived there the previous day. I was the last to arrive, and I was just in time for dinner. The introductions were swift. At dinner, I noticed a tall, dark-haired, handsome woman I hadn't met before. She didn't look at all friendly. More cold and clever. Interesting. I wondered who she was, but I didn't ask. I was sure someone would speak to her by name during the meal. However, I was a long way from her at the table, and the conversation was bright and amusive. I completely forgot to ask the woman's name. There were twelve of us, including the Sangstons. We were all young, or trying to be young. Jack and Violet Sangston were the oldest, and their 17-year-old son Reggie was the youngest. It was Reggie who suggested Smee when the talk turned to games. He told us the rules of the game. The name comes from It's Me, of course. Every player is given a sheet of paper. All the sheets except one are blank. On the last sheet of paper is written Smee. Nobody knows who Smee is except Smee himself, or herself. You turn out the lights, and everyone goes quietly out of the room and hides. Everyone is charged with looking for Smee, but of course you don't know who you're looking for. When one player meets another, he challenges them by saying, Smee. The other player answers, Smee, and they continue searching. He went on. But the real Smee doesn't answer when someone challenges. The second player quietly stands beside him. When they are discovered by a third player, they will challenge and receive no answer, and they will join the first two. This goes on until all the players are in the same place. The last to find Smee forfeits the game. It's very amusing. In a big house, it often takes a long time for everyone to find me. As Reggie finished, Violet Sangston stepped forward with a warning. If you're going to play games in the dark, please be careful of the back stairs on the first floor. A door leads to them. We've always talked about taking the door off. In the dark, a stranger would think that they were walking into a room. You could get really hurt. A girl broke her neck falling down those stairs. Reggie. Tell them how it happened. She was apprehensive. But if she didn't tell the story, Reggie surely would. It was ten years ago, before we moved in. There was a party, and all the children were playing hide-and-seek. A girl was looking for somewhere to hide, and she heard someone coming, so she started to run to get away. She opened the door, assuming it led to a bedroom, but it was the door that led to the back stairs. She nearly jumped, and landed at the foot of the stairs, killed instantly. The room was quiet with uneasiness, but none of us had known her. It wasn't right to feel sad on Christmas Eve. We promised to be safe. We started the game immediately after dinner. Reggie went around turning all the lights off, except in the sitting room where we were. We prepared the twelve sheets of paper, eleven of them were blank, and one of them had Smee written on it. Reggie mixed them up, and we each took one. I looked at mine and saw that it was blank. A moment later, the lights were turned out, and I heard someone moving very quietly to the door. The rest of us waited for a minute before rushing from the room. I had no idea who Smee could be. For five or ten minutes, we were all rushing up and down the passages, in and out of rooms, challenging each other and answering, Smee? Smee? After a while, the noise had died down. I guess that someone had found Smee. Finally, 
I came across a group of people sitting on some narrow stairs. Smee? I asked. I received no answer. So Smee was there. I joined the group just as two other players arrived. Each hurried, neither wanting to be last. Jack Sangston was last and forfeited with laughter. That's everyone, isn't it? Reggie lit a match and held it up to the staircase. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. He shook his head, laughing. That's one too many. The match went out. He lit another and counted again. He got to twelve, and his forehead creased with confusion. There are thirteen people here. Oh, nonsense, Mrs. Gorman laughed. You probably began with yourself, and now you're counting yourself twice. Someone handed him a flashlight, which was much bigger than the match. We all counted as a group. Of course there were twelve of us. Reggie laughed. Well, I was sure I counted thirteen twice. From halfway up the stairs, Violet spoke nervously. I thought that there was someone just here, sitting two steps above me. Have you moved, Bernadette? Bernadette shook her head no. The air shifted as a cold finger seemed to touch us all. We felt generally uncomfortable and unpleasant, momentarily unsure of what to do. And then we laughed at ourselves and each other and felt normal again. There were twelve of us, and that was that. Still laughing, we went back to the sitting room and started again. This time, I was Smee. Violet found me while I was still searching for a hiding place. That game didn't last long. As we prepared for another round, Reggie pulled me aside. I've got to talk to you. We went into the breakfast room. What's the matter? I asked. I don't know. You were Smee last time, weren't you? I nodded. Well, of course. I didn't know who Smee was. Mother and the others ran to the west side of the house and found you. But I went east into a bedroom. There's a deep clothes cupboard. It's a great hiding place. I thought Smee might be there. I opened the door in the dark, and I could see the outline of someone there, behind the hanging clothes. I reached in and touched their hand. Smee? I asked. There was no answer, so I thought I found Smee. I went in and closed the door, and I can't describe it. I suddenly had a strange, cold feeling, like something was wrong. I turned on my flashlight, and I was alone in the cupboard. But I am sure I touched a hand, and nobody could get in or out because I was standing there. You imagined you touched a hand, I said. I knew you would say that. Of course I imagined it. (laughs) That's the only explanation, isn't it? I could see he still felt shaken. But I agreed with him, and together we returned to the sitting room. The others were all ready and waiting to start again. Perhaps it was my imagination, but as we played this round, I had a feeling that nobody was really enjoying the game anymore, but everyone was too polite to mention it. I had a deep, uneasy feeling. I tried to laugh at myself, but I did not succeed. At first, I stayed close to the others, but for several minutes no Smee was found. I left the group and started searching the first floor to the west of the house. I was feeling my way along the wall in the pitch dark when I bumped into a pair of human knees. My hand touched a soft, heavy curtain. I knew where I was. There were tall windows with seats at the end of the passage, with curtains touching the ground. Someone was sitting in the corner of the window. Smee? I whispered. There was no answer. So I sat down beside her to wait for the others. That's when I realized I knew who this was. It was that tall, pale, dark woman from before. I'm sorry, I never caught your name before, I said. After a moment, she whispered, Bailey Ford. She was taking the game very seriously, I thought. I whispered an introduction back, but she didn't respond. I asked another one or two rather ordinary questions and received no answer. I began to feel a little annoyed. Smee is a game of silence, but there was nobody else around. Why was she insisting on keeping quiet? I turned away from her. I hope someone finds us soon, 
I thought to myself. As I sat there, I realized that I disliked sitting beside this girl very much indeed. Before, I had wanted to know more about her, but now I felt really uncomfortable beside her. I trembled, wanting to jump up and run away. I prayed that someone else would come along soon. Finally, I heard light footsteps in the passage. I heard the curtains move, and a hand touched my shoulder. Smee! It was Mrs. Gorman. Of course, we didn't answer. She sat beside me, and at once I felt much better. You're not Smee, are you? No, she's on my other side. Mrs. Gorman reached across me, setting her hand on the woman's silk dress. Hello, Smee. How are you? Of course, the woman didn't answer. Oh, it's against the rules to talk. Never mind, then. You know, this game is beginning to annoy me a little. I hope we're not going to play it all evening. I'd rather switch to a nice quiet game, all together by a nice warm fire. Me too, I agreed. Can you suggest it when we return? I'm sure I'm being very silly, but I can't get rid of the idea of the extra person on the stairs. Somebody who ought not to be here at all. That's exactly how I felt. But I didn't say so. Hmm, I wonder when the others will find us. After a time, we heard the sound of feet, and finally Reggie's voice. Is anybody there? We're here, I answered. Is Miss Gorman with you? Yes. You've both got forfeits. You've kept us all waiting for hours. But you haven't found Smee, I complained. What are you on about? I was Smee this time. But Smee is here with us. Reggie ignited his flashlight, shining it directly onto Mrs. Gorman and myself. Between me and the wall was an empty space on the window seat. I stood up, but sat back down again. The room was spinning. There was somebody there. I said, because I touched her. Mrs. Gorman was trembling. So did I. And I don't think anyone could leave this seat without us knowing. Reggie seemed to shrug it off. We were not very popular upon our return to the sitting room. I found them in the window seats. The tall, dark girl was by the fire. I approached her. So you were pretending to be Smee and then you went away? She laughed, bewildered. Mrs. Sangston approached me. The two of you kept everyone waiting. It was very rude. But we were not alone, I protested. There was somebody else there. She was pretending to be Smee. I thought it was her. I pointed to the tall, dark woman. But she's refused to admit it. It couldn't have been Charlotte. I was with her the entire time. Charlotte? I exclaimed. She told me her name was Bailey Ford. Violet Sangston went as pale as a ghost. Bailey Ford? I confirmed. The cold wind whipped against the windows. That was the girl that fell down the stairs and died ten years ago. Her name was Bailey Ford. Smee, written by A.M. Burridge, adapted by Brian Renaud, told by Samantha Garcia, featuring Erin Holland, Shannon Lee Weber, and Ashlyn C. Hafer. <laughs>